welcome to Arise, Shine, for the light has come. I'm Minister Michael Kernan, bringing to you a full gospel Christ teaching ministry, which is committed to the uncompromised Word of God, allowing God's people to come out of darkness and into His marvelous light. But first, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Open the ears of the people who are listening to this broadcast so that they might understand with their hearts and be converted. And I pray against all hindering spirits that might try to prohibit this glorious gospel from going down in their heart with power, that it might be effectual. In Jesus' holy name I pray, amen. Today our subject is to be content. The Bible tells us to be content. We presently live in a consumer driven society and are bombarded by advertisement of conspicuous consumption. It's constantly bombarding us. Buy, 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 buy. It, you know, keep up with the Joneses. Buy some more. They make it easy to get caught up in glorifying flesh and the things pertaining to it where creature comforts abound. But we're going to see here that God calls us, his children, to be content with such things as we have. Name of the show, Be Content. And I'm going to start off by reading from 1 Timothy 6. I'm going to start with the third verse and go down to the, about the 12th or so. If any man, I don't care if he calls himself a bishop or you know, a uh, uh, counselor this or counselor that. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. If you really want to come down to a few words for the gospel, it's according to godliness. And right now, godliness isn't, pres uh, uh, isn't popular in a hellish world. And they're going to try to wean you away from godliness? That's not going to work. It says, the name of the show, be content. Be content. If any man teach otherwise cons and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing but dotting about questions and strife of words whereof come Envy, strife, railings, evil surmising, perver perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself. A lot of prosperity preachers out there preaching prosperity. And they, they, at the end of the message, they say, well, I need, I need your money so I can get this message out. Is it? According the, is the message according to godliness? Is it according to the words of the Lord Jesus Christ? Some people teach you can't do what Jesus Christ that did or said because he spoke law and you can't do the law. Jesus Christ, hallelujah, was a prophet of God. He spoke after the cross. Everything Jesus spoke of was after the cross, after flesh has been crucified. Our flesh, not his. He was perfect. He was the word of God made flesh and dwelt among us. Thank you, Jesus. He bore, he bore our sins on the cross. And through faith and what he has done, our sin in the flesh has been crucified. We're supposed to be a temple of the Holy Ghost, not a bunch of sinners saved by grace. Walking around doing the same old things we used to do when we were so-called in the world. If you're acting like the world, you're still in it. If you're acting like the world, you're still in it. There's got to be a change in your life. You, you come, you're going to come to a point where you realize, you know what, Lord, you've done a marvelous work in my heart, and I want to thank you for it. That's why we praise God. That's why we praise God. There is no excuse. When you read this word, it needs to sink down into your heart with understanding. And our understanding is simply doing what it says. When it says, you know what? If any man consent not to wholesome words, and then it says a little bit farther, it says, withdraw thyself. If they're not teaching this gospel properly, 
Get away from them. But the verse 6 here, 6 and 6, 1 Timothy 6 and 6, but godliness with contentment is great gain. When you can just be content with what God has done in your heart, and he'll tell you what you need to do and what you don't need to do. You need that personal line of communication with your heavenly Father, and that is through his Holy Spirit. For we brought nothing into this world, and as certain we can carry nothing out. Everyone, including the atheists, I believe can agree with that one. We're not taking none of this stuff with us. Not one thread. Not one thread. Not your favorite suit. Not your favorite clothes. I mean, you, you want to you go away in a, 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 your home, home-going uh, ceremony in a, in a casket? That's fine. You're not taking that suit with you. You're not taking that suit with you. For we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, clothing, let us be therewith content. But they that be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. That's not a good thing. You know why? Why? Because they've, they've walked away from God. They trust money more than God. And they trust in their money. They, they put all their trust in money and in the things of this world and not in the, the salvation that God has for them. Thank you, Jesus. Which drown men in destruction and perdition. Perdition is the state of the damned. When you're, when you're damned by God, when you're under the curse, when you're under Adam's transgression and you're under the curse, you're in perdition. And there's nothing you can do. I know when I was still in sin, hallelujah, I'm not in sin no more. When I was still in sin, my heart used to languish. And I was pretty a, a pretty miserable cuss. Yes, I was. I was not happy. And you know what? I Apparently, I wanted the whole world to know it. It says misery loves company. I, 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 I probably could testify to that effect. But I know for a fact that God has changed my heart. He t- took away this stony one and put in a heart uh, 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 of compassion, of love, of long-suffering. Galatians 5, 22 and 23, the fruit of the Spirit. He'll t- when we give up self, when we give up pride, when we, we give up the things of this world, the, uh, our old man, when we surrender our will to God, hallelujah, he'll replace it with him. Yes, he will. Verse 10, for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some covet after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Oh, yeah, a lot of rich people, a lot of rich people, you know what? They're not happy. They you hear millionaires killing themselves. I mean, you know what? They can't buy one ounce of peace with their filthy lucre. They can't buy it. But you know what? God gives it away for free. Yes, he does. His name is Jesus Christ. Jesus is our peace. Uh, Ephesians 2.14, he broke down the middle wall partition. That was sin in the flesh. That middle wall partition, he broke it down and made two one. I and him are one. Hallelujah. I'm his body. Thank you, Jesus. A child of God, a a true believer, you believe in Jesus, you're a child of God, you're born again, you truly believe that Jesus is Lord and Savior, and you treat his word as such, hallelujah, this is the word of the kingdom. This is his decree of righteousness. If these words offend you, you know what? Get saved. They'll come around to the point where they'll start sounding a whole lot sweeter when you just get the victory. Thank you, Jesus. For the love of money is the root of all evil. We all use money. Nothing you can do in this society. We've got to use money. Nothing evil about money in and of itself. The love of money is the problem. When you love money, you're going to use people like dogs in many cases because you love that money and you want some more of it. You don't have your own, so you've got to take theirs. 
You know what that and that's a, what's going on out in them streets. Everyone's ripping off from everyone. And you know what? Some people really think highly of people that are thieves. Oh yeah, they think oh you know well he sits on this board and that board and you know the school board and everyone worships him and you later find out you know uh, he 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 uh, he or she had a real bad reputation for stealing. Uh, uh, taking money that wasn't theirs, basically. For the love of money is the root of all evil. And it will make you lose your mind. Yes, it will. It will make you lose your soul. It will make you do things that you ought not to do. When you love money, you're going to use people. But God would reverse that around and say, love people and use money. Just use money to buy the things you need. The name of the subject is be content. Thank you, Jesus. But thou, O man of God. Now, he's, he's talking to Timothy. He's talking to Peter. Uh, uh, Paul here is talking to his son in the faith. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life whereunto Thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Timothy's going around testifying about the grace of God, which is his sufficiency. 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. The grace of God has an element, an element of mercy. Absolutely. Unmerited favor. There's an element in there. Oh, yes. All those things are seen in Jesus Christ. First. John, excuse me, St. John 1 and 17. The law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So Mr. Grace, Jesus Christ, the gift of God, and you can't get them through works. You get them through, hallelujah, you get them through God's goodness. I'm going to Ephesians Two, name the subject, be content, Ephesians 2, and I'm going to start in verse 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith. Ephesians 2 and 8, for by grace, God's grace, I want to just touch on grace. A lot of people are perverting the word of grace. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and it's not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. The gift of God is Jesus Christ. Christ, not of works, least any man should boast. So we couldn't, we couldn't do it through the law of Moses because we, we would wind up being braggers. Like that Pharisee, he went before the altar and prayed, Oh, Lord, look at, all, look at all the things that I've done and how great I am. And I'm not like all these other people, especially that nasty publican over there, a tax collector, who was despised in these people's eyes. They had a job to do, but they... They, they should have been part of the, the faith. Instead, they were puppets of the Roman government. So they were despised by the Jewish uh, 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 Pharisees. Not of works, least any man should boast. For we are his workmanship. There's your key. You want to see what grace is? We are God's workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. Christ before Jesus, our risen Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah the victorious one. You see, Jesus Christ, he means the cross. He's talking about the lamb there. You see, Christ Jesus, he's talking about the victorious one, the one that purchased our salvation, the gift of God. Hallelujah. Mr. Grace, risen, glorified, hallelujah, who wants to give us of his spirit when we accept what he has done. That's the faith part. Not getting houses, not getting even fancy educations. You know what? If you got a fancy education, you can go to uh, uh, what they call Ivy League school. All you're going to be without salvation is a smart crook. That's what they're teaching students in the major universities, how to be a smart crook. That's it. Without salvation, you have nothing. I am convinced of it. Thank you, Jesus. But he did not leave me that way. For we are his workmanship. He said, I'm going to take that stony heart out of your flesh and put in me, hallelujah, his Holy Spirit. 
And he's going to transform our heart as we yield to his dictates. Romans 8 and 14, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. Thank you, Jesus. Created in our risen Savior, Christ Jesus, unto good works. Oh, there are good works. Yes, and he'll tell you what to do. Those are good works. When you're obedient to what he tells you through his written word and through his Holy Spirit, which God before ordained that we should walk in them. So he already has a whole laundry list of things he wants us to accomplish while we're down here. Number one, A number one, live for him. We call him Lord because he sure enough is. He is our sovereign. He is our king. And we obey, just like in the olden days, when the king made a decree, you obey it gladly. God loves a cheerful giver, not just of our money, but of our time, of our, of our life. He wants us to give us him, uh, of us. He wants us to give us our, ourselves completely to him, uh, absolutely and completely, and obey. You'll see the word obey over and over and over. So when it says it in the word of God and we obey it, it says we got life. We're fighting the good fight of faith here. And we're laying hold on eternal salvation. Eternal salvation is when we are sure enough risen with Christ. God showed it to me in a vision. I'll bring this little chart out. I bring it out now and then. I haven't lately because of my different setup. But you got the spirit, the soul, and the body as seen in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. The body came with sin in the flesh from our first father's transgression. Our soul was not alive. It was born dead. Oh, yeah, we were born dead. Our heart, on the other hand, was getting darker. It didn't know any good or evil when we were children. It just started getting darker and darker and darker. In time I was in my late teens, early 20s, I was a washed-up young man, and I didn't know what was wrong with me. I needed salvation, but I was too proud to accept it. Here it was, a gift of God, and I'm like, I don't need that stuff. I can do this my way. I, you know, I was, I was completely content to be without God in my life. So what happened? I got so miserable, I decided to give him a try. Oh, yeah, bad news for the devil there. Hallelujah. And your heart, God showed me our hearts, the circumcision. Our heart's circumcision, the circumcision, the spiritual circumcision, let's turn there. The spiritual circumcision, Romans 2, Romans 2, 28 and 29. Romans 2, 28 and 29. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outwardly in the flesh, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit the spirit and the heart are the same thing not the one that pumps blood the fleshly one but the spiritual one and it's not in the latter whose praise is not of men but of God we are praising God for the spiritual circumcision God showed it to me in a vision my heart is already risen in glory and as I turn things loose as I glorify him he's pleased with what i'm doing and my speech is no longer seasoned with with uh, the the things of this world but with the things of god hallelujah and as long as we speak that way he's pleased he's going to work our heart over thank you jesus because we give him the okay god can't do anything against our will because he's good because god is good he will not transgress our will. No, he won't. So we're going to Matthew 6. Matthew 6. I'm going to read from 24. Matthew 6 and 24. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and he will despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now, mammon is anything of this world. It's not just money. 
You cannot serve God and the things of this world simultaneously. You're going to love one and despise the other. And when God comes, I, I say this all the time, this is a defect in my character, something that's not like God. Hallelujah. And God's going to come for it. He's going it, to, in, in, in this case, be content. It could be covetousness. That's what he's working with me. If I don't need something, I don't get it. I don't, and he's tugging at it. Let it turn it loose. You've got to turn it loose, or you're going to stay right there in that reduced state. But the minute you turn it loose, he starts to exalt you in the fruit of his spirit. Yes, he does. Thank you, Jesus. Those attributes should be in our hearts as a child of the living God. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to 31 and 33 through 33. Matthew 6 and 31. Therefore, take no thought. Take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith shall we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that ye have need of all, the, all these things. He already knows you've got need of things, and he'll make sure you get what you need. I had a, a, while, a subject a while back, a difference between a need and a want. A want is a luxury we don't need. We just want it so bad. Somebody, I seen it in somebody else's hand, and I just got to have that device. And God's telling you, no. You know what? You'll get to the point where you're going to want to go God's way. Thank you, Jesus. For all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's Romans 14 and 17. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. He'll give you the things as you need them. There are certain things that I can't buy. He won't allow it. Because later on, when my, uh, uh, I'll just go ahead and say it, he elevates me, they're going to fry in my hands. Certain electronic devices, I'm not going to own. I'm not going to be able to share in a lot of these apps. Because God's going to move me up in the elevated uh, uh, glory. Hallelujah. During this present life. Thank you, Jesus. And he's already let me know, don't bother buying them. They're not going to work. All my life, I couldn't wear a wristwatch because they'd fry within two days. <clears throat> and that was from 12 years old on. Now, I'm going to be moving up. I can't buy just anything I want. I'm going to have to live my life in a certain way hallelujah, that I'm going to have to deal without a lot of these luxury items. But that's okay. God has already shown me that. And I want to praise him now for all that he's already done. Thank you, Jesus. I don't need all these things. I don't need all the trappings in life. He has showed me, you know what? I need to be good enough with you. Thank you, Jesus. And you know what? I'm sold out to God. Thank you, Jesus. Mark. Mark 8 and 31. Mark 8 and 31. And he began to teach them, this is Jesus here, that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed, and after three days rise again. Good news, but it wasn't at the time. Understand, they didn't understand. They didn't have this Bible back then. They only understood what Jesus was teaching them at the time, and they wanted him to remain forever. They thought, many thought that the kingdom was going to be set up down here. The kingdom of God, again, righteousness, peace, Jesus is our peace, broke down the middle wall partition. I can touch the throne of grace for myself. I don't need my pastor. I don't need the elders in a big, huge prayer circle. Those folks can be out of town. I need to be able to touch the throne of grace for myself right there and right then. Hallelujah. And he spake, and he spake that saying openly. And Peter took him and began to rebuke him. But when he had turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan. Now he wasn't talking to Peter, but the spirit inside of Peter. 
a spirit of rebellion, a spirit of loving mammon, loving the things of this world more than the things of God, although he didn't understand them at the time, but God does not mix his words here. Get behind me, Satan, for thou savors not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, and he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. What does that mean? Deny self. You, you, you got you to put the old man off. This, see, he's talking about after the cross here. He's talking about after the sacrifice, after the lamb has been slain. Hallelujah. Himself, the lamb of God. Take up his cross and follow me. What's my cross? Well, when somebody slaps me across the face, it's not comfortable. When somebody doubts my salvation, it doesn't feel all good and tingly. You know, uh, a warm and fuzzy now, does it? When somebody comes up and says, oh, you think you're all that. And they give you the, and they give you the business. And they just, and they, they, they go on and on. And, and, you're, just, and you're, you're, you're picking up your cross. Just love them. I know uh, my dad uh, passed away not that long, a couple years back now. It, uh, time's flying. It's been two years now, and he passed on. And before he did, he had uh, dementia. He had dementia. And I was, I was uh, caring for him, and he, he got really cross with me sometimes, and he'd get me so mad. It, it's amazing how your parents can really get to you. You know, especially when they're saying really mean things. Here you are putting your life on hold and take, taking care of them. And, and God just kept telling me the Holy Spirit would just keep reinforcing it. Just love them. Just love them. Just love them. Just love them. And I just kept loving them. And that's all I could do. That's all I could do. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake. You see there, you're picking up your cross. You don't have an agenda no more. You're going to do what God, you want to go God's way. That's why we call him Lord. When you do what he says in these pages of this book, you have life in you. There is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Romans 8 and 1. Why? Because they walk not after the flesh, which is crucified, thank you Jesus, which is supposed to be crucified, but after the Spirit. Again, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Be content. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever, therefore, shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him, also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. So, you know what? we got to live this life like it means something. And we can't be ashamed. And the only way you can't be ashamed is actually calling Jesus Lord and meaning it. He is your Lord. And he has started that glorious transformation of your heart. You know, as we start getting older, we, we don't look like we used to. We're not a spring spring chicken no more. It doesn't look like a lot of the stuff is happening, but you know what? You can't fake it. When things aren't going right, you can't fake it. You got to you got to get to the point where, you know what? Let go and let God. You know, if the house ain't housing, the the job ain't jobbing, the the spouse ain't spousing, the children aren't children and the foreman, he won't foreman. You know, everyone seems to be feeding you to the dogs. And and you know what? You come, to the, you come to the Lord humbly and meekly and say, Lord, I can't live this life without you. He'll get it done. As soon as you become sincere, you're going to find out he is very real indeed. We're going to St. John. He is, he, he'll, become, he'll become, as it says in the old scripture, your strong tower. He'll become your confidant. Hallelujah. He'll become your friend. He calls you. Now, once you get salvation, once you get Sweetly saved, you're no longer a servant, but he calls you friend. Hallelujah. St. John 21 and 15. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, 
son of Jonas, love thou me more than these? He's looking around. Do you love me more than these people that we're dining with here? He's, you know, mankind. He said unto him, yea, Lord, thou know that I love thee all eager. You know, he's, he's with the master. Hallelujah. He's all happy. He said unto him, feed my lambs. He's warning them. You'll see how this works out. And he said unto him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, love thou me. And he said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And he said unto him, Feed my sheep. And he said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, love thou me. Now Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Love thou me. And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. And he, at this point, Peter's having some doubts here, huh? Thou know that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. He's, he's warning him ahead of time because he sees, God sees what's going on down the road. Truly, truly, I say unto thee, when thou was young, thou gird thyself and walk where thou would. When he was a young man, he did his own thing. Another way to say this, he just did his own thing. But when thou shall be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee and carry thee where thou would not. This spake he, signifying what death he should glorify God with. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, Follow me. Follow me, Peter. Don't worry about this world. Follow me. Peter was a hard case. So was I. God had patience with this hard case. He had patience with Peter. Peter wanted to do his own thing. And Jesus seen down the road, he was going to slip back into doing his own thing. And even then, you know, even then, uh, Paul had to rebuke Peter for not living according to the faith of, of, of the, the doctrine of grace of the Gentiles coming in to the fold. That means all of mankind was uh, 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 able, hallelujah, through faith in what God has done. Not through the law of Moses, but through faith in what God has done. We can't do it through the law of Moses because we would become self-righteous and we would be and, and we would still wind up messing up. There's so many laws, but God instead has said, I will write them in your hearts and in your minds. I will write my laws in your hearts and your minds, and you will do them. Because you know what? When he puts something in my heart, it remains forever. I will never forget it. It's like it's like a treasury. Uh 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 a, a storehouse of his goodness, of his word. And I know certain things don't please God, and I don't do those certain things anymore. Hallelujah. Because he's warned me of them. If you go to St. John 12 and 20, uh, uh, 42 and 43, St. John 12, 42. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers, also many believed on him. They believed in Jesus. But because of the Pharisees, because of the upper crust of the religious faith, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. They didn't want to lose their position, for they loved the praises of men more than the praises of God. And that's what Jesus was warning Peter of. You know what? Feed my sheep. Follow me. Jesus spoke real simple words, not trying to confuse people, Hallelujah. He spoke simply. When he said, pick up your cross, that means, you know what? This life doesn't always need to be convenient for us to follow Jesus in spite of. A lot of people are going to find out, oh, you're, you're, you might, at, at work, you might get along with people. The minute they find out you're a Christian, they can't stand the sight of you. That's okay. That's picking up your cross. You know what? They might come up to you someday and say, pray for me. Pray for me. I had people watch me for 25 years and finally get saved because they were keeping an eye on me. They were watching me all those years, mocking me, making fun of me. You know what? They, they weren't laughing then. Pray for me, Mike. Pray. Okay, absolutely. Let's do this. Let's get this done. Thank you, Jesus. God is weaning us away from the things of this world and toward his eternal kingdom. Again, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You need that to survive this life. 
the temptations, the attack of the enemy. In my life, it's relentless, but that's okay. I got a hold of Jesus. He's got a hold of me, and I'm going to reach out for you. If you can grab a hold of this, please do. At, you know what? It's entirely up to you. God has made it entirely up to us to accept or deny him. God is weaning us away from the things of this world. And you'll see, you'll see some of them in uh, 1 John. You're going to see some of them in 1 John uh, 2, 15 through 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that does the will of God, there's your will, the will of God. That's, that's those good works that he's ordained that we should walk in them. Ephesians 2 and 10. And the world passes away in the lust thereof, but he that does the will of God abides forever. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. Thank you, Jesus. God is weaning us away from the things of this world and toward his eternal kingdom, where our heart's only desire will be him. Our hearts that's supposed to be risen, only desire will be him. And I got a song, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. I want to sing, not sing, but tell you, I love this verse. I love this verse. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full into his wonderful face, and the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. In the light of his glory and grace. The things of this world, thank you, Jesus, are supposed to go strangely dim. When you're sure enough saved, they will. Hallelujah. The new birth weans us or estranges us from our old sinful nature. The old man is dying a little more each day. Let go and let God. Real simple. We're going back to Matthew 6. Matthew 6. And I'm going to read now from 21. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. You want your treasure to be in the glory? you got to put your heart there. If your treasure is down here in the things of this world, that's where your heart will be. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let's go to Colossians now. We're going to Colossians 3. 1 and 2, Colossians 3, 1 and 2. If ye then be risen with Christ, that's right here, right now. He's not talking to people here that are dead, that have passed on, as you will. That, that their bodies, they have laid these bodies down, and their spirit is no longer in that body. If ye then be risen with Christ, he's talking about right here, right now. That's a spiritual baptism. Seek those things which are above where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. There is your key. Again, we go back to Matthew 6 and 21, and we see where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. What are you putting value on? Be content. Hallelujah. And now we're going to the main scripture of this. Hebrews 13 and 5. Hebrews 13 and 5 says, Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he had said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. He will not leave us. We can leave him. Because he's good, he can't force his will upon us. Now, because the devil's evil, he can. The devil will take you, hallelujah, uh, against your will. You can be calling yourself a child of God. But you know what? You got a life you got to live. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. You know what? If they want to teach you can't do what the Bible says, what's the sense in having it at all? And when it says let your conversation be without covetousness, that means let it go. 
let it go. That's, that's your life. That's your salvation right there. The only reason we can do it is because he's done that glorious work in our heart. And be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. He's working right now. I'm 52 and a half. He's working on me with covetousness. And he does not let up. If I don't have a need, I do not fill that prescription. Absolutely not. I don't need it. I don't get it. Well, I just, oh, well, everybody else has. You know what? That ain't flying with my God. That ain't flying. Be content. This is how he raises me. How he raises you is entirely up to you. But I, all I know is how he raises me. He wants all of me. Hallelujah. And I would imagine he wants all of you. Thank you, Jesus, because that's how my Bible reads it. Life more abundant is flesh surrendered to the cross and our spirit subject to God. We will want to go the Lord's way. Hallelujah. Life more abundant is flesh, the old man, surrendered to the cross. Whenever he tries to rear up his ugly head, and he will from time to time, flesh will want to go on Front Street, go on parade. Oh, yeah, get out there and, you know, like a drum major with a big, big stick dancing around out there, you know. Life more abundant is flesh surrendered to the cross and our spirit subject to God. That's life more abundant, right there. Not houses, not, not, not bank accounts with seven digits, not bank accounts with eight digits. That's not glorifying God. We will want to go the Lord's way. Let's go to 1 John now. We're going back to 1 John 5, 1 and 3. 1 through 3. Hallelujah. 1 John 5, 1. Whosoever believes... That Jesus is the Christ is born of God. That faith is going to be hard fought for. The devil's coming for it. This world is coming for it. Mammon is coming for this faith. Oh, yes, it will. Oh, wouldn't you rather? I mean, those dollar bills are just, I mean, you're going to be dreaming at night and dollar bills are going to be dancing around. You know what? The love of money is what? The root of all evil. Whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Absolutely, positively. You can take that to the bank. Hallelujah. God's holy bank. And everyone that loves him, that begot love him, that began to love him, also that is begotten of him, fathered. We're fathered by Christ. Hallelujah. We're, we're his body, and we're uh, given his spirit. Thank you, Jesus. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. You. How, why is it written like this? When we love God, if you don't love God and keep his commandments, you don't have the capacity to love the children of God. When you're bitter, when you're a sad sack, when you're walking around defeated and moping and crying and, oh, God doesn't understand. Oh, he understands perfectly. Flesh doesn't want to be crucified. Flesh wants to be on Front Street. But flesh needs to die. Paul said, I die daily. I die daily. I protest. I protest by your rejoicing, which I have. This is my salvation I'm talking about. I'm going through hell. Paul went through hell because he had a lot of pride. He had a lot of book smarts. Paul was a smart guy. He trusted in his pedigree and his family heritage. You know, he had all these things going for him, a child of Abraham, you know, the, the old Jewish faith. He had to come to a point where he came to an end of self and just said, God, whatever you have for me, and I got scripture coming up that will lead you this through this. He said, God, whatever you have for me, I want some of it. Thank you, Jesus. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. God's commandments are not hard. They're not austere. You just got a stony heart and surrounded by flesh. You got a, a, a stony heart surrounded by flesh, and the commandments of God are grievous to you. You know what? You got to turn the old man loose voluntarily. That's the way I see it. You got This is a volunteer army. And when you're in army, you go through boot camp. Once you come out boot camp, you might have to go through a few skirmishes 
I know I have. The devil's coming for your faith. Whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ, he's coming for that faith. He knows, you know what? If I don't wipe this one out, he's going to have his foot on my noggin in no time. And I, I don't like that. So let me tell you something. The minute you get saved, expect, expect persecution. Expect all the stuff that this Bible says you're going to go through because it's a coming. But that's okay. He says, I will, I will never leave you nor forsake you. But he, he might have to whoop your tail but good. And he has mine from time to time. This process is learned. This process that I'm talking about, this new birth is learned. It may seem like you're in a bubble and austere. Your life is austere compared to others, including some in the church. God don't want us rich in goodies, but rich in faith. God wants us rich in faith. He doesn't care about the goodies. I'm telling you, you you're going to cry to him about goodies. Oh, Lord, I want, I want. I, and you know what? That stuff, that stuff just ain't flying with him. He doesn't care about the goodies. I know. I can testify. Philippians 4, 9. For those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me. Paul's here saying, use me as an example. I'm doing what Christ told me to do. Now, I'm telling you to do what Christ told me to do. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace, that's Jesus, shall be with you. Because Jesus is our peace. He broke down the middle wall partition. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly, now th that now at the last your care of me had flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Here Paul was a tent maker. Paul was an accomplished journeyman tent maker. And he worked with his hands much of the time. But when you're working... With your hands, you're not preaching the gospel. Here, he said, you know what? You're helping me spread this message so I can spend my time preaching the word of God. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned. Paul learned this. You have to learn this. In whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased. I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things I am instructed, both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Nehemiah 8 and 10, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So you got no strength, you got no joy. You need the joy of the Lord. You got to get to the point. Remember the, 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 um, the, the kingdom of God? The last element was joy in the Holy Ghost. Our joy, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Communion that we have with Him is priceless. And if you go down to the 19th verse in Philippians 4, but my God shall supply all you, your needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Our risen Savior has a whole storehouse full of things that He is rich in. And one of them is glory. One of, them, one of them is mercy. One of them is the fruit of all of his spirit flooding your soul in your time of need. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to Philippians 3 and 7 now. Paul here. If you back it up a little, and I, I'm not going to for sake of time, but he's calling himself a Hebrew of Hebrew. He's, uh, he's a Pharisee, touching the law, perfect. Everything he did up to that point, he was blameless in his own, uh, uh, in his own heart, in his own mind. He, he said, I, I did everything I could, including, uh, uh, you'll see that he persecuted the church itself. But what things were gained to me, I count those things lost for Christ. All the things that he had before, his education, he, he was on, well on his way to becoming a doctor of the law. Uh, sitting at the feet of Gamaliel, uh, a doctor of the law. Uh, he was, uh, for his age, he was probably far above all his peers. His father was a Pharisee. I mean, he was raised that way. And he had to leave all that prestige behind for Christ. Hallelujah. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency 
of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Hallelujah. And let me tell you something. I say it all the time. The devil's coming for that faith. Yes, he is. He doesn't want you to have it because he knows once you get it, you're going to hold on to Jesus, and he can't defeat you. Not, not only that, you can defeat him, that I may know him. Here we go. Business starting to pick up here, that I may know him. It's all about a personal relationship. What does God want from me? What can I do to please him? You want, you'll just want to go God's way after a while. You'll, you'll get to the point where I am now. I just want to do what pleases my heavenly Father. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. Oh, yeah, that's picking up your cross. That's our suffering. That's our part in it. Being made conformable unto his death. We are being made conformable unto his death. I bring this chart out. If you look at it, our heart was dark, our soul was dead, and our body had sin in this flesh. When you accept the Lord as your personal Savior, sin in the flesh is crucified on the cross. Our body is now a temple. Hallelujah. When we accept the baptism of the Holy Spirit through laying on of hands, hallelujah, Christ is starting to be formed in us. Our soul comes alive, and our hearts are in, in glory. And God starts to do that glorious work. We're being made conformable unto Christ's death. He was just like we want to be. So as we walk through this life, and we do the things that please God, Christ is forming, hallelujah, a, he's clothing us in God's righteousness. We are going to shine just like God's radiant glory. Our soul is going to be clothed with Christ. Our heart is going to be just like God. So Adam was in his image and in his likeness. Our hearts are going to be like God, and we're going to be clothed in his right, uh, righteousness, which is Christ in us. Hallelujah, our hope of glory. Thank you, Jesus, that I may know him, a personal relationship. i, I got to know what God wants from me. And the power of his resurrection, that's, that's the Holy Spirit. That's Christ formed in us. That's our hearts being, hallelujah, led by him. And the fellowship of his sufferings. We're going to have to go through some stuff. Yes, we are. Being made conformable unto his death. We're being made conformable unto his death. And if you go back to Peter, 1 Peter 5, 1 and 2, we were, I, I touched on suffering. I didn't talk about it much today, but we touched on suffering, and I want to bring this to a conclusion here. We're, we're running out of time. 1 Peter 4, 1 and 2, For as much then as Christ had suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. Just count it as you're going to go through it too. Christ went through it. You're going to go through it. Why? Well, Here's your answer. For he that had suffered in the flesh had ceased from sin. They say you can't live without sin. Well, they got to suffer some more in the flesh. That's all I can tell you. And I've suffered plenty, believe me. He that no longer, that he should no longer live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. Now the time in his flesh, flesh here means a temple. It doesn't mean sinful flesh. It means this outer body, which is now a temple, hallelujah, which is crucified flesh. Thank you, Jesus. For as much then as Christ had suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself likewise with the same mind. Count it as, count it as done. It's going to happen. You're going to go through it. For he that had suffered in the flesh had ceased from sin. The devil meant it to destroy us, but God's meaning it for our salvation. Thank you, Jesus. That he should no longer live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. 
And if you go down, it says, For the time past of her life may have sufficed us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles, to work out all that stuff the old man used to do. When we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that you run not with them, your old friends. They think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. Oh, yeah, they'll dog and damn you. I actually had one person tell me, that's all very nice. I'm glad you got salvation, Mike, but you know what? If you're going to start preaching that stuff, don't come around here no more. I don't want to hear it. I had to make a choice, didn't I? And for years, I chose my friends over salvation. And I realized, you know what? They didn't love me like Jesus loved me. Hallelujah. Jesus took all that gook out of my heart and surplaced it with him. Thank you, Jesus. Surplanted it with him. I just want to thank you for your time. I hope this has been fruitful. I'm uh, running out of time, and I'm going to leave you, as always, with a prayer from Psalms 19. Get this down in your heart. This is New Testament prophecy here. Hallelujah. This is after the cross. What I'm reading to you was written by David, but it, it's after the cross. This is, he's talking salvation here, true salvation. Psalm 19, 12 through 14. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. You see that? When you all these things, you're praying, Lord, keep me. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I can't do this walk alone. I can't do this through doing good even. You know what? There's nothing I can do. I can't jump high enough. I can't sing loud enough. I can't, I can't hand out food to the poor. What I can do for myself is submit my soul to God, my living soul to God, say, Lord, keep me. Watch over me and pray. Keep praying. Prayer works. In Jesus' name, thank you. Hallelujah.